approve this tape to the Historical Society. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll start with um, the first person in your family that was in this area. I think it was probably uh, Mary Castle, which was my grandma, and she was well known here by uh, everybody. And, uh, and uh, my dad uh, grew up <coughs> grew up here, and uh, they lived at around Stockard Bridge there. And I was born in the, the old building in the Airway Lodge. Oh, cool. Uh, and it's still there. I think they're going to have to tear it down pretty soon. Really? But what was your father's name? George. Uh, oh, same, same as, as you. Mine. So you're, are you a junior or second or what? I'm a junior. Okay. And um, your father was born here too, you think? Yes. What year was he born? Now you're getting into them. Technical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got that information in, in there. Oh, okay. What year did he die, do you remember? Uh, uh, let's see. In uh, 40. 47 or 48. Okay, so you were young when he died, fairly young. Yeah, I was uh, a little better than a teenager, I guess. Uh -huh. but, uh, okay. Um, so when were you born? Uh, June 12, 1924. Okay, and you were born at Airway Lodge, that's cool. Did, so is that where your family lived? Yeah, that, we lived in the old log house there for uh, uh, until I was about seven years old and then we moved in up on uh, North Central Drive here and I oh. was raised there. North Central Drive where Sherwinville is? Well, yes. It's, uh, well, it's, it's the main road that goes on out to uh, the freeway exit now. You know. Oh, okay. Uh, so where were you, like, from where Sully Ballou lives? Is that where you talk about, out oh, Main Street, that way, where you grew up? Yeah, uh, our house was just before you turn on Sherman Road there. Oh, okay, so on I, the town side. So I grew up with all the Shermans and the soap socks and, sure. and all sure. that. Nice. Okay, and your grandmother Mary, who was here, do you remember her? Was she still alive when oh, you were a kid? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. she lived, uh, to see, I think she was... 86, and uh, in fact, she always had a wood stove. She wouldn't cook with anything else. Really? And, uh, and she was an excellent cook, by the way. Uh -huh. Did your family live with her? No, no. no. She, uh, lived we lived, she lived just across the river from us there. And, uh, at Airway? At Stackard Bridge, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, when she was 82, I, she ordered some wood to come out and I went out and split it for her and and the next day I went out to go fishing with Eddie Gallnick and I looked over and she had all the wood out and was re-splitting it because it wasn't right for a cook stove. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so was she a widow by that time? She was what? A widow? Was she by oh yes, yes. Uh, Your grandfather? I never never knew my grandfather okay. there. What was, what was his name? Do you remember? Uh, his name was Jake Gasson. Jake? Yeah. Jake Gasson. What did he do for a living here? Do you remember? I imagine, I'm just guessing, I imagine they worked in the woods and, yeah. and uh, farmed a little bit and then they guided, they all guided on the river, my dad and all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, your father, how many brothers and sisters did your father have? Uh, he had one brother, uh, it was Samuel, that lived in, it was a barber in Lansing. And uh, his sister, uh, she died quite young, and my grandma really raised her the, her grandchildren. Oh, what was the sister's name? Do you remember? I think it was Mary too. Uh, oh, okay. So your grandmother raised her three children, and then yeah, Mary's children. Yeah, she raised uh, Sammy Gonlick and Al Gonlick and Kale Gonlick. Uh, what was the last name? Kale. Kale. He was his nickname. We always called called him Kale. How do you spell that? Just K A Y O. K A Y O. Hmm. Okay, they were raised by their grandmother. Their last name is Gonick? Yeah, there it was, yes. Okay. So 
So Mary married uh, Mr. Gallman. No, she. Uh, Jake Casanova was her husband, and uh, Frank Gallick was her son-in-law. He was the father of the boys that she raised. Your, your father was George, and yes. he had a brother Samuel. Yeah. And a sister Mary. Yeah. Okay. Then Mary's. Say that again about about Frank. Well, uh, Frank Gonick was uh, his sister's husband and the father of uh, of the three boys that my grandma raised. Okay, so did Mary Kessenhoff was married to a Gallnick? No. Her daughter. The daughter they Mary. They both was 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 uh, okay. Was married to you. It's, my grandma was Mary Kessenhoff and was married to Jake, and and her daughter was was married to Frank Gallnick. Okay. Mother yes. of the three boys. Right. Got it. Okay. That's and and the, those three boys are the ones that the grandma Mary raised. Raised. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and so then in your family, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I just had uh, the two, uh, well, they were really half-sisters, but it never made any difference, you know. Uh -huh. It was Violet and Arbutus. Uh, okay. Was their last name Keston Holtz? No, they were, uh, the name was Dilts, D-I-L-T-S. Their maiden names. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we might as well keep going with that. Who did they marry? Uh, our beautiful married James Spiegel. Okay. And Violet married. Uh, well, we always called him Slim Barrelocker. Oh. Okay. All these local names get mixed together. Yeah. <laughs> In a small town. It's very nice. Yeah, you can't well, talk about anybody here. Oh, no, you be careful. <laughs> they're all related or they're next door neighbor or something. Okay, so your father, your grandfather probably worked in the woods, and your father, what did he do for a living? Well, he, uh, well, they farmed a little bit, and then he guided on the river, and then uh, he worked for the road commission here, and also he worked on the section. Had a section crew here years ago, you know, when the railroad was going good. And, uh, okay. okay, then did he work for Michigan Central Railroad? He was one of their employees? He was, uh, yeah, he was uh, on the section crew there. Okay. They had a, it was stationed here in Ross Common. You know, this one, there was two of them, in fact. One went south and one went north. Two crews? Yeah. Like how many men were on a section crew? Probably, uh, oh, three to five. And their job was to maintain the track yeah, for so they, many miles. Yeah, they had the little hand cars and patrol the road and uh -huh. put in new ties and check the rails and yeah. all that. Did your father retire from Michigan Central Railroad? Uh, I don't think it, at that time they, they had a retirement. Uh -huh. they, that, uh, okay. Right, because he, he died right after the war then. Yeah, well. Uh, you were thinking somewhere in there. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so you were born in the house uh, at Airway and then moved into town, so right, to speak. Right. Okay. Well, tell us about what you remember being out at Airway. Well, I was pretty small and I don't remember too much about that. Remember there. jumping in the river or anything? Uh, <laughs> well, no, I, uh, I was a little bit small then. Uh -huh. I was about, I don't know, six or seven years old when we moved into... Do you remember moving town here? I remember moving here, mm -hmm. and then uh, I might have been around five because I was, we was here a couple of years before I started to school, and because oh. boys were seven then when they started to school, oh, okay. you know, and you didn't have kindergarten. Yeah, okay. And, uh, okay, so um, what can you tell us about what you remember about going to school as a little, little kid? Oh. First of all, I didn't like it. <laughs> and I, my mother had a rough time with me. And then uh, after, well, after I got up into the junior high and high grade, boy, I, I, I liked it. And I, I didn't want to leave then, I guess. Oh, for and, uh, I had a 
I had a real good bunch of... Did you walk into town to school? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was uh, only about a half a mile or so yeah. to the school. So by the time you went to school, it was the new brick building? Yeah, but yeah, they'd... Uh, in fact, I, I started the first year that it was it was built there. Okay. So you were the first class that went all the way through that. Yeah, yeah, and we was a we was the biggest class that ever graduated. I think there was twenty eight of us or something yeah. like that. Great. What year did you graduate then? In uh, nineteen forty three. Forty three. So right in the middle of the war. Yeah, yeah. We had to get deferred before the Penny School, you did know, you at that really? time. Really. And, and, uh, were there still 28 of you when you graduated? Is that how many graduated? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Great, great. Do you remember some of your teachers from the Oh, yeah. Early yeah. Years? I, I, uh, when we started the school, we had Mrs. Lampier, and she was, I don't know how old, but uh, she was like a mother to all of us, you uh -huh. know. Sure. And then uh, through the years, we, we had. Uh, Oh, Mrs. Paul and, Miss, and uh, Mrs. Lance, she used to substitute for her, and, and she was, her and Don was just married then, and oh, okay. she, she was quite a knockout. All of us boys just fell in love with her. May Lance? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. And, uh, oh, we had, we had good teachers all the way through, I mean, really dedicated, mm -hmm. yeah. And Mrs. Madison, Miss Madison, was our homeroom teacher, and uh, she stayed an extra year here so she could see our class graduated. She was a yeah. homeroom teacher for three years, and she was, nice? she was, well, she was just like a family, I mean, she was like a mother to us. Sure. And, What's uh, her first name? I don't recall that. Beulah. Beulah, Beulah Madison. Madison. Okay. She was an economics teacher, but she was our homeroom teacher. Oh, yeah. And, Great. And uh, she was a wonderful person. Wonder where she went from Ross Conway. <coughs> um, I I have no idea. Yeah. Well, before we get on to your after high school thing, um, what was your mother's maiden name? Uh, Rose Hollinger. How do you spell that? H H U N I N G E R. H U N I N G E R. Is that a German name? Yes. Uh, well. I think we're kind of a mixture, you know, yeah, a little. Yeah. Did, where was she from? Well, most of them all come from Ohio up here with the lumbering days, you know, oh, okay. and then they settled here. And uh, did her fa was her family? Did she meet your dad up here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, they, yeah. They. Most of the the people around here then come up from Ohio mm -hmm. right, with the lumbering, you know, and then they, they stayed here. And so did your grandparents on the Honeyger side, were they here also? No, no, they lived in Port Clinton, Ohio. Oh, okay. And uh, I have, I still have relatives down there, mm -hmm. cousins and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where she met your dad. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah, I have no that, idea. That was before my time. Right, they didn't tell you. <laughs> okay, so were your half sisters younger than you or older? They were older. They were older. older. Okay. Were they hers by a previous marriage? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank the other name was Diltz. Okay, she had been married to Diltz before. Yeah. Otto Diltz was. Okay. Okay, let's. Um, go to, when you graduate from high school, then where, what, what did you do next? Well, it was just about the end of the, of the war then, mm -hmm. and I went to work for the, in the DNR office here, I started oh. to, and uh, Jack Price was in service, and it was his job that I was working at, and he was uh, due to come back, and when he came back, well, I was out of a job which was naturally in all them days. Yeah. So I went to work for Wyckoff then in the woods. I become a lumberjack. Oh, what had you done at the DNR or conservation? Well, I was working in the office there. Oh, okay. And, uh, then you became a lumberjack. Huh? Did you work for a company or who just, did you work for? Just the Wyckoff. Oh, Wyckoff, you said, uh, right. 
and he's, that was before he started the lumberyard. He was in the, the sawmill and pulp business and so on. And, How uh, far did you travel from that? Where was his, did you go to more than one lumber camp in those years? No, no, no. I, we worked right, right here from his house there. He had his trucks and stuff, and we uh, hauled the logs and pulp and stuff to the mill here and then loaded the pulp out in the cars on the railroad spur there. Where were they shipped to? Uh, quite our city, uh, the pulp was, because oh. and, and the lumber was yeah, sold right here. During the war, they was taking it right off the salt rack. They didn't you know that it was really? scarce. And oh. uh, so I worked for him all around 10 years, I guess. Mm -hmm. and so into the 50s? Yeah, and when then I got, well, I got drafted uh, in occupation, and I uh, oh. spent uh, all around uh, a year and a half in Japan, in Tokyo. I was in MacArthur's MPs. Well, what year was that? In 48. So that was before you worked for Wyckoff? No. You started with Wyckoff and got Yeah, I, I graduated in 43, and I only right. worked Oh, six months at the DNR when oh, I was out of a January. job, or would have been. Okay. And, but he never took his job. I should have stayed. Oh, didn't he? <laughs> what did he do? I don't know what he did, but oh. he didn't come back to the DNR. Oh, and, for heaven's sake. But it was too late then. Uh -huh. Probably just as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about being in Tokyo for a year and a half. What was that like? In Tokyo? Well, it was uh, well. It was almost like a vacation for me after being <laughs> coming out and working in the woods. But uh, it was very interesting. We was uh, um, more like city police, and we were uh, MPs. You know, we controlled everything: uh, traffic and and uh, foot patrols and everything, really? and, and uh, guarded him a lot. Uh, when he, he was stickler for parades. And okay. uh, when he you would, like that, uh, huh? and when he'd go watch him, well, we'd be in fatigues with our pistols, and we'd be sitting all around him, you know. Really? And uh, that's why I said when I got out of the service, there's two things I'd never do: is march and play cards. And I've kept my word. Really? <laughs> you played a little cards over there, huh? Well, yeah, we'd have guard duty, see, and you you'd be on like four hours and off, but you was there 24, so you had nothing to do. You couldn't leave. So everybody played cards. <laughs> but you were pretty good at it by then. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wasn't too interested in it then either. Oh, no. It just passed the time, huh? But it was very interesting over there. Uh, the, the people was was really terrific with with us, you know. Really? And, uh, and the the thing that that I just can't believe the way they did it in Iraq. Over in Japan there, there was nobody that had any weapons whatsoever. They was all taken away. Even the policemen there didn't have weapons, and we never dared to lower our pistol unless it was an emergency. Mm -hmm. And over in Iraq, you see them on television, they all shooting in the air and mm -hmm. you got yeah. guns, and I, I just can't feature that. Yeah. So the Japanese people were not antagonistic to you then? Oh, definitely not, no. Mm -hmm. they, uh, I never saw a group of people so eager to learn. I can see why they have flourished the way they have, because we used to have disciplinary patrols around. We had our area. We had to go with a jeep, and then we had to check into the police Japanese police station every half hour and sign in. And uh, we was in one there one night, and a, a little boy come up to me, and he had one of the Dick and Jane books. You know, and because he couldn't read, and he wanted me to read it to him. Well, I started to read it to him, and before I knew it, there was about fifty or sixty kids. Well, I don't know where they come from. They just really? come out of the woodwork, really? and uh, they were just eager to learn, well, and uh, and very honest. They, they, uh, the businessmen there, they were businessmen. If they could. Uh, Jew you out of something or make you buy it would, but they wouldn't uh, 
you could lay your billful down anywhere, they'd never touch it. I was amazed. Well, that's it's quite nice, an experience. Nice to hear. Yeah, you don't hear many positive things about yeah. that time frame. And another thing that I always was amazed at, uh, and this was uh, uh, MacArthur there. Her and, and little Doug, there's their boy, was probably, I'd say, 10, 10 years old. They traveled the streets on the streetcar there every day by themselves. No, no protection or anything. And when he went out anywhere, we were sitting all around him. I never could quite. <laughs> <laughs> but they thought the world of her. She did so much for the kids over there that was just remarkable. Really, really. And she'd be if she couldn't catch the the streetcars and all. Uh, she'd flag us down in the jeep and <laughs> she'd sit on the back of the radio until <laughs> we take her where she wanted to go. Wonderful. Yeah. So you really, you really were up close and personal with them. Well, with, more with her than him. I mean, uh -huh. you never, you know, we got to talk to him or anything. He was just stationed around. Or, and when he come out of the, the Daicha building there, they the had what building? Daicha. That was the headquarter building in Tokyo. Well, how do you spell that? Daicha. <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm not. Oh, okay. The person uh, who has to transcribe this will want to. But it was the big building right, right at the. Uh, their big park there was right across the street there, and uh, they, he had his honor guard, but there'd always be four of us go down when he come out of the building and stand, and he'd walk through to his car. But they had different sounds all the way. It was a big building, and he was, must have been on the fourth or fifth floor because there were different sounds when he was on each floor coming down, so we knew right where he was at. Wow. That was. That's quite an experience. Well, you know. sure. Did you take a lot of pictures when you were there? Uh, yeah, uh, quite a few. Uh, in fact, uh, when I first got there, we was in the uh, displacement center there, you know, waiting to be assigned different places. And I was, because I was taking pictures of everything, it was all new, and there's MPs was marching a prisoner down the road, and I. Uh, took a picture of it, and they come over and took my film out because you couldn't take a picture of a prisoner, you know. Really? I didn't have too good of an opinion of an MP uh -huh. after that, and about half hour later they called us out and said I was going to the 720 MPs, and I wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> I imagine <laughs> but, not. You didn't but, know what uh, <laughs> it was wonderful when I got there, really. Yeah. So you were the year and a half right there in Tokyo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got, I come home, and I was out about, well, and then the Korean War started, and I was recalled. Really? And uh, again, I lucked out. I uh, went to Fort Sheridan, and uh, I was supposed to report to the 128th, 178th MP Battalion. They'd already been sent out, so they kept me there and decided if they was going to send me over to them or not. In the meanwhile, they evacuated an MP. Uh, uh, battalion from uh, Topeka, Kansas, and they hadn't even finished their basic yet, so they kept me there as an instructor, oh. and uh, that was quite a deal too. Eh? So how long were you in Topeka? I wasn't. I was in Fort Sheridan. Oh, I, you were still. I, I stayed there. right there. Oh, they they evacuated there, uh, them too, Fort Sheridan. Oh, they brought them. Okay. So uh, and. Uh, and we used to uh, I would teach classes, and then we would uh, I'd have town patrol, and we went a lot of times. We would go into Chicago with the city police there, and work with them. We'd take care of the GIs, and and they would take care of the, the other people. Uh -huh. I took some awful rides with them police in Chicago. Believe me. Did you? Wow. Uh, How long were you there? Over just a little over a year, and then we was uh, released. The reserves were. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were happy to come back to Little Rock, Thomas? Oh yeah, always, <laughs> always, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. nice. Okay, so that was in the fifties. Then did you go back to work for Mr. Wyckoff after that Korean? Uh, yeah, shortly. But then I went to work for. Uh, Pioneer Log. Oh, and, uh, where are you at? Yeah, and uh, I uh, 
we traveled by what was on the road. Well, we cut timber in here for for the logs, you know, the turning logs in the winter, and then in the summer, well, I went on the road with Tom and the, the crew putting up the buildings. How far did you travel with that? Oh, we built a lot of them in Pennsylvania and, and uh, Ohio especially, but we 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 went all over there. And, uh, so we'd be gone for two or three weeks at a time. No, those houses was like putting a blockhouse together. You know, really? there wasn't a nail in them until the top log enough. and so on. We'd be gone probably three three or four days. Is that Sometimes long? out in Pennsylvania, uh, we'd be gone for maybe five days. But uh, wow. It had to be. Yeah, we. Um, were the were the logs shipped ahead of you, or you? No, were we hauled them. You hauled, hauled them, but they was put you. on the truck. So as you took them off, you just laid them, and they was all numbered and everything. It was. Uh, if that. Very organized. If they was in business today, that they'd have a mint with, because and uh, they got to where they. They passed the law where it was about insulation deal, you know, and they, they wasn't insulated, it was full log, you know. And uh, that kind of uh, stopped the business, but today they did away with that, and uh, there's a really demand for log cabins now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, uh, they were well well built structures. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then it was, uh, you know, it was, you could put anything you wanted on the inside, it was all, you didn't have to firm all it or all like you would the log, yeah. regular log. Yeah. So that was, and then I went to work from there, I went to the road commission, oh. and uh, I was there 32 years. Really? So you were a county employee then? Yeah. Well, county, and then we had the state contract too, our vacations and stuff, you know, was come, up, come out of the state and oh. so on. But uh, I started out as labor, and then I went to heavy equipment and for 10 or 12 years, and. Uh, then I went to the engineer department. They started the engineer department, and I worked in there the last 22 years. Oh. It, uh, they uh, taught me drafting and one thing or another, and I did the maps and all the plans, helped with all the plans, and then we surveyed the road and inspected the black tops you know, and inspectors. Oh. And I bet you know where every little road is in this county, huh? I did until I retired, and then they called me back to, to to change the names for 911, there were so many duplicates. I oh. changed 700 and I think 38 names in the county for 911. No kidding, what year was that? Uh, 80, 89, well, I retired. You retired in 89? Yeah. And they called you back? Right after right I after retired, that? yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, that was a Project, wasn't it? To yeah, yes, it was. Uh, yeah. Someone yeah. asked us once, how did Joyce Kilmer Road get its name? Who named it Joyce Kilmer Road? Do you know anything about that? I I couldn't tell you. I would say it. I would say there was a person out there by that name. Well, Joyce Kilmer was a poet who wrote that poem about trees. You know. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was so, due with him or not, or if it was it just it happened to be somebody, somebody by that, that name. Poem about the tree. It, it could be. I, I have no idea yeah, on that. Okay, I, 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 I couldn't. I thought maybe you might know because we couldn't find the answer to that question. Uh, so now I can go around the county, and I don't know where I'm at anyhow <laughs> after changing all those names. <laughs> That's a lot of names to change. Yeah. Well, That's there was so many Oak Streets, Oak mm -hmm. Avenue, Oak Street, and mm -hmm. and Lakeview. Names oh, that uh, there was so many duplicates. Every subdivision had an Oak Street or a Lakeview, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was uh, yeah, that's quite a job. I guess it was. Uh, what were some of the main projects that were accomplished the years you were on the road commission? Oh, we we rebuilt the uh, F ninety seven out there. And uh, oh, all of, practically all the roads, 300 and around the lake, uh, around Houghton mm -hmm. Lake and there, and we built all those those primary roads out there. Uh, we I worked on either is in the crew, you know, with the loader or equipment, or else we surveyed them out to, after I got into the engineer department. Mm -hmm. And all the subdivisions 
around here we inspected when they started building in these to make sure that the grade and stuff was right and then I uh, worked on all of them paving them uh, practically all of them great well you did a fine job George <laughs> our roads are way better than Crawford County uh, I I have to agree to that we won't yeah. go there <laughs> yeah. okay well you know, let's get back a little bit to your father being um, a river guide can you tell us about about that? Yeah, they used to, uh, uh, well, they was, you could say rich people, I don't know how rich they were, but mm -hmm. they were better off than we were. Mm -hmm. They'd come up and they would uh, fish their south branch here, and they had a river boat, you know, and they would guide. They still do the same, but... Uh, uh, did he have his own business, or did he work for somebody? No, they they just come up weekends and... and Notify and when they was, was wanted to go fishing, mm -hmm. and he'd be there. So was it mostly just in the spring? No, it was all summer long. Oh, those guys, uh, whenever they had a chance to come up there. Uh, uh, so he just did that out of his house. Yeah, yeah, and uh, all my relation guided. You know, I did too. There, from the water's edge down here in Camp Bells, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, so that was a private thing you just arranged with whoever was there? Yeah, it was just a, uh, a service. Uh, service on the side that you had that, you know, you picked up a few dollars here and there. Mm -hmm. now, uh, the man that owned Forest Rest, which is still on the river down there, was uh, Dick Clark, and he never had any children, so he gave give my dad Fifty dollars if he named now my million name, middle name is William. He give him fifty dollars if he would name name him after him because fifty dollars back then was that was something. That was something, you know. Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, my grandma there, she uh, always uh, baked bread and pies and cakes and stuff for uh, James Oliver Curwood, uh, the author, you know, uh -huh. and. Uh, uh, Even when she was living in town, not yeah, no longer by the river. Well, no, she never lived in town. She always lived out there. Oh, she she walked there. back and forth to work in town. So yeah. she stayed in that house where you said you were born? No, across no, the river. No, across the river. She, she owned her own there. house. Oh, okay. Yeah, she stayed there until she died. Oh, okay. And uh, but she did. Uh, she baked for uh, James Oliver Curtwood when he'd come up. Well, he was the first place he'd go and pick up his stuff, and, and so and then she baked for Cliff Durant, really? too. Uh, did you know these two gentlemen? I didn't know Curtwood. My sisters did, but I uh, I would uh, I didn't say I know him, but I uh, I seen him a lot out the grandma's there when he'd come and pick up his stuff, and he. I always liked to be there because when he left, whatever change he had in his pocket, he always gave it to me. <laughs> well, you were a smart boy. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I can remember when he used to, uh, he had a red Mercedes convertible. Really? You know, he was a race driver, you know. Yeah. And he used to come into town here and he'd pick up the older guys in the town and take them out around. But, W and W curve and scare the heck out of them, you know. Really, really. <laughs> he had a good time with that, didn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, then um, you were quite young when that castle burned, or do you remember that? I remember when it burned. Yes. Did yeah. Did you go see the fire? I never. Or? No, I never seen it till just the ruins after I started going down river. You know. So how far down river from where your grandma was would that castle be? Oh, uh, um, or did you see it a lot when you were guiding? I uh, used to. Uh, it's it's in the Mason Tract. They're about halfway through between between Chase and uh, uh, the bri next bridge down there. Uh, the castle is there, so it's probably uh, oh, twelve or fourteen miles down the river from our, from uh, Stackert Bridge. So, when you were young and that the ruins were still there, did did your kids go out and play there or anything like that? 
just when we was in high school, we used to, uh, well, there was a bunch of us used to go down, down river every year. We'd take a couple of days out of school. It was Andy Shervin and uh, uh, Ralph Osling and Kenny, because mm -hmm. Kenny was in my grade, and Mike Shervin and uh, Bob Jensen, folks, was caretaker down there for uh, Mason at the Downey place. Oh, okay. So we grabbed anything that would float until we got down to his place at the Oxbow, and uh, his wife always had a big dinner for us, and, and then we'd take his good river boats on down to Mile, and he'd send his guides down and pick us up. Oh, wow. That was a yearly event all through school, you know. Really? All of your teenage years? Yeah, and they, he'd take us in to show us his house, and he had a, um, well, not a bunkhouse, but it was... Now, who was that again? George Mason. Oh, it George donated Mason. the Mason okay. track okay. to the state. And he, and I heard you say Oxbow. The Oxbow was his home Okay. on the river. That was uh, Where was that in relationship to that downy place? Oh, that was quite a few river, uh, quite a few miles down below. Oh, okay. uh, uh, that was below the next bridge down even. And, uh, oh, okay. But, uh, he had a house there that had all of his uh, mounted trout in it he's caught, and he used to release them out in front of his house, and he'd take bread out there and throw them, and it looked like when I feed them out here in my pond. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, wow. Is, that, is his stump home still there? His home is still there. It's the Downey place. They it tore it down when he donated it all to the state. They had to tear it down. Yeah. And, uh, so is Oxbow a private now? Well, he left it to his son, and I don't know if his son sold it or, or what. I, I couldn't say. Hmm. Well, those are good memories, huh? Going down. Oh, the river. I, I lived on the old river. I always had a river boat of my own, and I grew up on there. Uh -huh. I didn't have money to do anything else, you know. And there wasn't much else to do either. Well, and you probably brought the fish home for supper. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a lot of fish in the river then. Nobody fished it. But three or four of us, you know, and yeah. the fellows would come up and they guided. Uh-huh. Yeah. A yeah. lot different than it is today. I guess. I guess. Okay. Well, um, let's, let's have you uh, get married. And, do you have children? Uh, no. No? No. Okay. Uh, Alva had a, a, a niece and Roger at uh, when we was married, and uh, okay. I lived with my my two sisters there, and I helped them raise uh, uh, the three girls at uh, Boots Head and then uh, Ron Bearlacker, at yeah, I'm sure you know know of, but uh, mm -hmm. he was Violet's boy, so I helped raise those. And Alva's uh, children was the same age, oh. so uh, and we met roller skating. Over there, I, I took the kids over, and she took them, and we got acquainted, and um, we went together eight years. Oh, for heaven's sake! So we we could get the kids through school. Yeah. So then we got married. And what year was that? Sixty-seven. That we was married, oh. and, and I counted eight years onto it anyhow. You know, sure. so, so we was together <laughs> fifty years. Really, isn't that um, wonderful? Yeah, it was wonderful. I bet you miss it. A lot. I can imagine. I can't imagine. That's, that's hard. She's a great gal. What was her maiden name? Sher Sherbon. S H E R B O N. Okay. And where where did she grow up? Uh. In the uh, round Rockford, Illinois, in that area there. And uh, I don't know. If she met. Her husband, her Bud, uh, Bud Burt, you know, and then the, I guess they moved to Detroit, and and then he come up here and started the business there where it was Nagels. He was in on it anyhow, oh. and then uh, they got a, they got a divorce shortly after they moved here, and they bought this this place here from Esther McCready and. Oh. Uh, the property, or was there a house here? Uh, the property here, and the house was here too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, we remodeled it and I added on to it, but mm -hmm. uh, she lived here. 
from, I think, 1951, I think they come up here, if I remember right. Who, who came up? Alva? And Alva and then her, her previous husband. Okay. The Bud Burt. Bud Burt, yeah. Okay. So Denise and Roger's last name is Burt? Yeah. My niece is married now. To, she was married to uh, Keith Rubin for 25 years, and then they got a divorce, and uh, she married uh, Ron Rudder from Grayling. They had the lumber company up there in the Sears oh. store. Oh. So. Nice, very nice. Oh, nice family. Okay. Well, thank you, Ron. And you're growing up here, and your grandmother was still here. Did your family have a church affiliation? No, no. no. What did you? What did they come in for? The like when you were um, growing up, did you go to the movies a lot, or what else did you do besides playing the? Rivers? Well, yeah. When the I uh, all through high school, I run the theater down. I run the projectors in the theater you down did. here uh, for Bruce Freeman and okay. and. Uh, you had the double tortures on Saturday, you know, a Western and another movie. And then the, it, it was 25 cents for adults and 10 cents for children when I worked there. Really? And uh, I guess the worst thing I ever had was Gone with the Wind. That was four hours, and I don't know how many days they had it here, and I had to run it. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, huh. Well, that theater's been there a long time now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How many years did you do that? All through high school? Yeah, I was worked at it for the four years and through high school. Well, you saw every movie that came to town, then, huh? Yeah, <laughs> believe me, I saw them. <laughs> Especially oh. the Frankenstein oh, and Wolfman oh. pictures. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Well, what's your favorite? What was your favorite remembrance of Ross Common? Was it? You know, the fishing or the... Oh, I think it was the fish guy. I was always the fisherman and uh, still am. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, love for the river was never changed. I'm just sorry that young folks today doesn't hunt and fish or anything as much as we did or anything. You know, I do the art shows there and... and uh, You'd be surprised how many, well, they're teenagers, but almost 20 years old will come up and look at a partridge picture and ask me what it is or where they might see one. Really? You know, they, they don't know the name. The last two generations is all computers and television, yeah. and, and they don't know one bird or anything from another, and it's, yeah. it's really a shame. Yeah. That's why I have the pond out here. Every little kid that wants to come down and fish, I make sure he gets a chance. Uh -huh. Well, that's wonderful. What does it start with? Rainbow trout. Oh. Rainbow trout. And I catch brook trout comes up in the little one out of the river there. And oh. Whenever Don Barnes comes down with me and we fish it out there for the fun, whenever we catch a pretty good size and while we put it over in the, in the pond. The bigger one. Oh, good for you. Good yeah. for you. When did you start your um, painting career? Oh, uh, I think in around 57 or something along in there. Did you take, was the art available when you went to high school here in the forest? No, no. no. My, my nephew uh, took, took, did some oil painting in high school and he had the, all the paints there because I was living with it. He was living with us then or we were living together. So I, I always liked to draw and I used to wood burn you know, and stuff. And, uh, then I might as well try oil, so I I took his and I started out and I liked it and I just stayed right with it. I never had a lesson. I just okay. That's so wonderful. all trial and error. Yeah, I know we have one of your pieces at the Richardson School. Yeah. In that display. So do you, are you still painting? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I paint in the winter and yeah. fish in the summertime and play with my pond and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just I just put some paintings in uh, up up in Gaylord. There's a little gallery they got. It's a pretty nice little gallery. It's small, but it's it's well operated. Great, good and, for uh, you. Good for you. That's I uh, we used to do art shows all 
every weekend all summer for years all over. And really? It's got to be too much of a hassle as we got older. And, yeah. and, uh, that was a nice thing to do together, though. Oh, oh well, that, yeah. that's my problem today. Everything we did, we did together. Yeah, and now you're by yourself. Um, I think we turned this successfully, let's see. Hello? Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, what else was I going to ask you about? Oh, I wanted to ask you about transportation when you first were a kid. Did your family have a car already? No, and when we lived out, out on the river there, we had horses, a team of horses, and uh, we didn't have a car until way, way late. Uh, after we got moved into town, it was close enough. We all walked and walked. You didn't know. need one then. No, that's right. You didn't need the horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, then had a, a car later, and uh, I uh, I was always on a bicycle when I was a kid until I was 20 years old, I think. Sure, why not? <laughs> and, uh, everybody did then, you know. Yeah. Uh, kid, uh, Bob uh, Shepard had a car when we was in high school because, you know, his dad had the Ford Dodge there then. And, uh, so him and I and Howard Hodges, uh, we had good transportation. <laughs> <laughs> you were all set. Yeah, we, uh, we toured the country. <laughs> uh-huh. When you were in high school, uh, were you involved in any sports? Oh, yeah, I played uh, uh, basketball. Uh, some I I never uh, really made the first team, but uh, they was we had the best teams we ever had. Then when I was a kid, you know, and they was better. You know, you had Jim Rutledge and Harry Myers and all the, those guys were very good. And uh, I grew up and Earl and I really we didn't get along good in school, but we used to go fishing every night. Oh. <laughs> but, uh -huh. So that was another thing that didn't. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I only played uh, baseball, and I never played football because they they didn't have football at that time. They started the six man team, I guess, in the senior year. Oh, okay. But, um, so basketball was the main thing, and to then. How did you? How far did you travel with basketball team? I well, I I played all through high school, but uh, we um, stayed on the. Well, I couldn't have made the first team the last couple of years, but we had uh, it was Howard Hodges and I and Norval Hartman, and uh, the five of us, we played good together and we liked together. Mm -hmm. We run around together, so we just we we just stayed on the second team. They wanted us. To, they wanted us to go on. Some of us to go on the first, but we didn't want to. Uh -huh. so they didn't make us. So, so when the team, like when you played against Grail, and you all went though. Oh yeah. 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 We played all the all the teams that the first team played. That, uh -huh. that, uh, we played their second team. See. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't know if they have it that way or not. No, I don't. I don't. Well, they have a varsity and a junior varsity. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a little thing. bit different, it was then, because we all went together. You know. You had the first team and second team wherever you went. Then did you go to like your grilling school buses took you up there? Oh yeah, yeah, we went on the buses all over and over, then played them when they come here. Just so how far out did you go, Gladwin, Beaverton, like they do now? Yeah, or yeah. West Branch, you played West Branch. No, no, I never played West Branch. Yeah. Um, God, I forget. Most of the teams that we probably Farwell. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Farwell, Mayo, and yeah. uh, pretty similar to today. That yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much the same. It was. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. um, we was a long way from being as good as they are today. That's really changed, you yeah. know. Yeah. Did you travel by the train very often? Because when you were growing up, were the passenger trains still coming? They was they come through here, but uh, we never I never traveled much on them until I got in, uh, the MPs in Chicago, and then we used to travel. The, we'd go pick up prisoners in different places, you know, and we we always rode on the Bluebird there. They always scheduled us on there where we was be up above there by ourselves with the prisoners, you know, kind of uh, go to Milwaukee and all on different places and pick up prisoners. 
Well, let's see. Is there anything? Um, have you told us everything about your relationship with uh, Durant? That you remember, you said you came in with a car. What about his um, airplanes? Did you ever? Oh, uh, yeah. And you know, um, um, Dan uh, Dan Fisher wrote in a beautiful little book. I have them all, all but one, and he's, I'm still after him to get it for me. But uh, he stated in there that Durant was the first one that had an airplane here in Roscommon. Well, he he wasn't uh, Eddie Preston was um, you know, born here, he went into the Army in the Air Corps, and when he got a furlough, he, they, they let him evidently bring a plane home, because he brought it home and he landed it out where Oppie, Dr. Oppie's house, and then those houses are in there, that was all just an open field, and, oh, and it was on the way to my grandma's, so how come I remember it? And he landed there, and then once in a while in the evening he'd go up and fly over town. He was really the first one, but uh, Cliff uh, Durant then, uh, when he came here, he had two pilots, uh, Otto Graham and uh, Clarence Gunther. Otto Graham was a World War uh, Two pilot, or World War One pilot, and uh, Clarence Gunther was more or less a, a stunt pilot, or you know. But anyhow, uh, uh, and then uh, they had the big so dedicated. They worked for Cliff Durant. You mean, or they were? He they were, them yeah. They were his up? pilots. He'd fly up, you know, and, and uh, I don't know why he had two of them. I guess he he brought a lot of people up, you know. Uh, well, how many planes did he have? Pardon? Did he have more than one plane? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had he had two or three. One. He had the dedication out here to the airport where the credit union is now, you know, that used to be the airport. Mm -hmm. Well, he had, uh, he had his planes here and, and uh, his pilots, and uh, I remember that. Because <laughs> uh, my grandma was, you know, everybody knew her, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they uh, fixed one of his biplanes there. It, like they was going to take her for a ride, you know, her daughter, and then brought her out. And, she got in the plane, and the pilot was in the back seat, hid, you know. And when she got in the plane, well, the plane took off, and everybody thought it was she was in there without no pilot, you know. And uh, it was kind of funny. My dad didn't think it was so funny. He was scared to death. But, yeah. Uh, but that was quite an air show that he had out there. He had uh, invited all of his friends, you know, flew, and they just an And that was for the dedication. Dedication of it, yeah. And then uh, his uh, so pilot. How, how old were you then? I was about seven or eight years old. So that was. Uh, I was we just just started document. school. So like thirty-one or so. And uh, but the, uh, Clarence Gunther, the, the stunt pilot there, he used to come over town usually around noon, and then he'd do stunts right over the town, and he'd always do a tailspin right down over the schoolhouse and he'd pull it out just above you know if he did that today they'd hang him yeah, I guess right. Isn't that but that was just about every noon everybody went out to watch that when they knew he was here no kidding. Wow. but he didn't live here no they he just fly he Durant up and, Durant. and he'd be here well so was Durant here like most of the summer most most of the summer there he'd, he'd be here yeah and uh, I suppose they, they flew him back and forth, you know, for... When his castle so. burned, the castle had burned like in 29, hadn't it? I, I can't remember uh, for so sure. So then he stayed at Downey then, I assume. He stayed at Downey. He was living at Downey's when that was being built, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty... I hadn't heard about this stunt pilot previously. Oh, yeah. yeah they, so was that... Who all used that airport then that you were talking about? Well, about the biggest ones that used it, I guess, was uh, uh, Bill Emery, uh, senior, mm -hmm. and uh, Ernie Bertel, uh, the youngest er uh, Bertel boy. He had a plane, mm -hmm. and uh, see, there was a couple of other fellows in town here that had small planes, mm -hmm. and they was about all that ever used it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't big enough for any big plane to come in, you know. I wonder 
wonder how long it was there. Oh, God, I, I would say, I don't know, I'm just guessing, but I would say somewhere around 15 to 20 years oh, there. Hmm. It was, uh, I guess they used it pretty much until they built the experimental airport out here. I don't know just what year that was and, or not, I, I couldn't say. So Cliff came up with several airplanes when he, he had more than Oh yeah, that was loaded with them. Really? He invited friends from all over there to come there and it was quite an air show. They, yeah, Dick Young was a stunt pilot and he did all kind of acrobats and flew over the field there upside down and all that kind of stuff. And uh, a week later he was killed really? uh, doing a stunt flying. And you recall, I recall reading something about Cliff landing at one time in the river. Oh, there's, the pudding is still out in the middle of the river down there in front of the old Downey, where the Downey place was. Yeah, he, because he was quite a drinker, you know. A pudding for what? For the bridge, there was a bridge across the oh, river there. Yeah. And I, we have a picture of that in the museum. Yeah, now you have that. Well, he got drunk one day and went up. He could fly too, you know. He was a pilot, mm -hmm. and I don't know why he figured he could fly and under it, but he well, tried he it and didn't to make it. That bridge. Yeah, and he uh, crashed into it. I guess he, when he got his nose skin out of the deal, he probably was awful loose in there or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, I think there's. Pictures of even the plane in, in the river there, isn't there down there? There was I somewhere I seen them. I think so, or Dan has them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Okay. Um, your grandmother's place on the river, who owns that now, do you know? I have no idea. They've remodeled the, the whole thing, and uh, I, I think they're they just come up, I don't know, for hunting season or something, and nobody lives there steady, I don't think, and I have no, I have any idea who, who bought it. How much hunting did you do? Well, I used to hunt all the time. I couldn't wait till 4 o'clock to get out of school to go, cause, and uh, we lived down there, and you know, I could just cut right back through to the river and up to there, and there was all kind of birds, partners at that time, you know, and then weekends, why? Well, there was no place below Ross Common until uh, you got down to Stacker Tools Place that was built there. That was the only place that was on the river. And I used to hunt down one side to Grandma's and get a good meal and then hunt back the other side. <laughs> there, but, uh, then did you, I assume that you hunt for deer in the fall? No, I never, uh, I never liked deer hunting. I liked to duck hunt and small game and stuff, but I never killed a deer. Really? I tried, but I never had luck. Back then, it was 10,000 does to one buck, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I never cared for it. Well, you certainly paint beautiful paintings of them. <laughs> well, I got, it's a wonder they ain't all here now. I got, you got to come right out and stand there every day. model for you, huh? I had two that I, uh, I fed here last winter personally. I had to go out and... <laughs> just pour it on the ground, they eat it all up so there's no evidence. And uh, there's the old, we had the old white-faced deer there, and uh, she uh, had a fawn a year before, but then uh, last year she adopted one. Uh, oh. His mother got killed and she took care of it. And, really? and, I, and that little fawn would almost eat out of my hand out here oh. for, for spring. And she came in here the other day, and uh, Don Barnes was here, and uh, he said, peeking around the corner, and I walked right out in the yard, and started talking to her. She, she wanted to come right over to me so bad, but <laughs> she was afraid of Don there. Oh, for I didn't think she'd remember me, but she did. Wow. She comes in every once in a while. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, they, they, get, they get to know you, you know. Uh, sure. The the doe and the fawn here, she spends all afternoon out here, no, two fawns, and the, wow. the other. I'm, I'm afraid you're gonna get hit on the road there, out on the road here a lot. Well, we're not happy with the ones in the village because they're eating our Well, flowers. my flowers. Are, 
I know what you right. mean. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Steckert Manufacturing. Did I hear you say that? You said you're going down the river to Steckert. Steckert Bridge. Oh, to Steckert Bridge. Just Steckert Bridge, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Is there anything else that you think you want to share with us? I... About your, about the community or... Were you ever involved with uh, uh, any of the village politics or? Well, I was on the village for uh, I was on the council for 12 years. Were you? And uh, I'm on been on the planning commission ever since. Oh, good. Now I'm on the everything else. They got automatically. I don't know. I'm on until they call me. <laughs> you know, uh, on the zoning board and yeah. you know I'm still on the. You've, you know. you've done those. Because you're a good citizen. We need lots of people like you. Well, I enjoyed on the council there. At the time, we had a good council, and then I had a little difficulty there. It was different things. That Who was the um, mayor or the, Matt or the when you were there? Was that way back with Doug Allen, or when were you on? Uh, yeah, I was the one that, uh, that pushed for Doug Allen to be manager, in mm -hmm. fact. Uh, and uh, he was the best one we ever had. You were to still working at the road commission at that time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working both places, and uh, uh, yeah, we we did a lot of things there that needed to be done that uh, nobody knows about, like our uh, well houses wasn't insulated or nothing, and and then the streets we paved a lot of streets and and uh, sidewalks and stuff and. Mm -hmm. Uh, was that in the 70s then? Uh, yeah, I started, I forget, just one, somebody threw my name in, I didn't run. How I got on there, I was going out to Illinois to Elvis folks, and when I came back, they brought us congratulated me being on the council, and I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> so that's how I got on, and so, uh, I, I enjoyed it very much. So we we had a good crew. We worked together, and and uh, they got a lot of things done. And uh, it wasn't popular with a lot of people. That that's part of the job, you know. Yeah, exactly. You got to take what's good for the majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Well, our little town has grown a lot in recent years, and yeah, even well, we've been here since Kirtland opened. Did you have an affiliation with the college? No, no. no. You should be teaching art classes out there. I've displayed <laughs> out there a couple of times. Okay, but, yeah. uh, oh, that's nice. I, uh, I, uh, Are you active in the veterans groups? No, no. no. I, both times I was in the service, it was a vacation <laughs> almost. And I, you know, I, I didn't see any action either time I was, Fortunate, I guess you yeah, might say, sure. and I just don't feel that I'm deserved to be with these other guys that had the fight. Well, that, that's true. It's a little different, but still, you still gave of your time and but, your talent. Uh, yeah, but it's, um, it's no big deal. It's something everybody should do. It has to, I guess. Do you have any contacts with anyone that you met while you were in Tokyo? Did you maintain any? Uh, I did for a couple of years, but they they passed away now. Uh, I had uh, two buddies that lived down in Owasso, and uh, we was in the, at Fort Sheridan there, and, and uh, but they they both passed I away know. there. In fact, most of my friends have. I'm you're, you're getting up there, aren't you? <laughs> I'll say. They've <laughs> uh, been very fortunate, though. Yeah, you're doing well. That's very nice. Uh, yeah, all my fishing crew was gone. I uh, used to go to Canada, Charlie Pat and B Raleigh Bomb and Mike Williams and all of them, and we used to go every year. And Where in Canada did you go? Oh, we went all over. We flew yeah. in and we drove in. And You're a real fisherman. I, I love to fish, yeah. yeah I, uh, I can clean fish, but I never could clean an animal or anything with feathers, I, I don't want no part of it. That's why I, I well, don't hunt. who cleaned the 
um, well, when the, part I, that you got. That you, well, when you I, my mother. Oh, well, your mother did my that My mother and folks and I did, yeah. But, uh, uh, and then after I started doing wildlife paintings, I didn't have the heart to shoot anything, so. Uh-huh. I you get so do you, um, are, do you eat a lot of fish? No, I don't care for fish yet. I, once in a while I go out and have cod or something. We used to have fish fries here when uh, all my relatives was close and our grandkids and stuff. Well, now they're scattered all over. It. We couldn't get together, but we'd catch them out of the pond there and have fun, you know, and then have a big fish fry. Uh -huh. And I like them that way, yeah, uh, really? deep fried. But uh, I don't. I'm a vegetarian more than anything. Oh, yeah? well, so Hot do dogs you, and hamburgers. Do you do you still go stream fishing in the main? Out here, you just just do your ponds. Oh, I I go out here occasionally, and not as much as I used to. But uh, I had had both knees done, and I'm a little bit skeptical about wading anymore, yeah. especially yeah. my age. So, <laughs> and then I there ain't the fishing out there that I got out here. So, right, so why bother? <laughs> But I don't, uh, I have more people down to fish, catch the fish out than what I do. I, I mean, I get a kick out of especially little kids. Okay. They've never sure. caught a big fish. It's, it's something you see them. Yeah, oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Well, I think I, that we've done well, covered um, lots of territory here. We've got your working career down. It's interesting about um, what you told me about Pioneer Log. I think that I don't, I know there are a lot of buildings around here, and we have had donated to us uh, some of their early catalogs. And Tom DeWitt did an oral history like this about his father, yeah. telling what all Roy did. So it's nice to his, his, hear again. His dad was, a, was the best boss I ever had, really. I mean, he was super. And, and you said there were three or four guys that would go out on a crew to. Yeah, Tom. Tom and I always. We go Gene Williams and uh, God, could you believe Gene Williams? Before? He's dead now, but he was so heavy and everything. You believe him? And I used to do the, all the high work on the buildings. No, <laughs> <laughs> now you'd have to you'd get a lift to put them both up there. Wow. But uh, we had some good times on the road there, and, sure. and it was Roy was really good to me. And, Okay, well, thank you very much, and we'll um, be, have an end to this, and thanks a lot.